So, working on this today. It's some five inch red heavy wall pipe. Um, it's got a set of 20 mil on it. I've got four drawings to do. So, two of them have a set of 30 and two of them have a set of 20 mil. And I'm gonna show you how I fabricate them. And um, yeah, hopefully it's an, entertain, an entertaining video. So briefly, just a rundown on the machine that I'm using. It is gonna be a, um, a MIG machine, of course. My Fronius TPS 400i. I'm gonna be rooting, all, all my roots are gonna be out. Um, where is it? This is my root setting. I don't know if I'm gonna include welding yet, but this is the root setting. And if I'm gonna be capping, it's gonna be around, no, it's big pipe, isn't it? So yeah, around 244 amps. The gas, 12% CO2 basically. And as for the wire, it's not written down there, but I'll show you. Here's the wire. As you all know, my mask is a 3M, a speed glass G501. It's an air fed respirator, pretty dirty at the moment, but it shall work. You're gonna see a hose in the back and I've got a respirator on my hip blowing air into my face. I believe that's all the rundown. Here's just a trolley of some of the fittings. So again, a five inch flange, PN16. It's all gonna be welded to class two, so nothing special. Don't worry about the, 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 the welding specifications in the comments and all that sort of stuff. It is only for cold water. So ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Yes, it has been a long time since the last video. Uh, my mobile welding business is just keeping me so busy that by the time I get home, no energy. And the energy that I do have, I spend it with my son. So, unfortunately, these videos get neglected. But I'm here today with a bit of carbon. My lovely old carbon pipe. A bit of Shed 20 heavy wall red pipe. Tacking it together using the table to you know have a flat edge nothing special if you've watched these videos you've seen it hundreds of times before my um level whatever the whatever the table is i make the pipe level to the table i use it as a straight edge and it's you know it's, it's a lot easier to tack certain pieces together not everything but simple things like this too easy just i'm almost splitting the differences and just keeping an even gap all the way around because even if the pipe is slightly pissed where's it going to be pissed to i have a lot of these cut down fitting situations so because the pipe work that i do is is mostly for data centers it's a ring that goes around the room up one floor around the room up one floor and you get final connections up to units and and stuff so every now and again there are crazy sets like this so four drawings two of them are 20 mil sets two of them are 30 mil sets i am sure you could just cut the pipe but the drawing didn't say to cut the pipe it says cut the fitting which is why i'm having to you know do this whole process and it works for any size pipe if i can be bothered i'll throw up some photos of me doing this on even 24 inch shed 40 pipe no you know what? it's in the description i've got a video where i'm cutting down it in the description so um yeah you can do it but the bigger the pipe the more accurate you have to be and then you use a laser level because something like this even if i cut the pipe pissed the gap is going to be still weldable but on big stuff your gap can be you know touching one side and on the other side it's 25 mil out that's you can't you, you, you can't weld that but I made a mistake fabricating this pipe. I've, I've made thousands of pipes now. Officially, I can say I've made thousands of pipes. I was on autopilot. So you see how I tacked together this 45, the, the elbow onto the pipe first, and then onto the 45. I should have put the 45 and elbow on together, just only because instead of having the level vertical on the pipe i could have had it horizontal over the top of the elbow it would have been easier to level off i had to kind of put it on the side 
take a look at the, the bubble and kind of not move and then get into position to tack it but it doesn't matter too much because what I was basically trying to do was get the 45 pretty much as seated in the right position as best as it can be but because I'm cutting most of the 45 off like 95% of the 45 is getting cut off um, because I'm doing that I didn't really care too much I just wanted to make sure that I had equal gaps that was more important than anything else so I'm going to explain what I'm doing here in a second but just you know take a second watch it enjoy taking as much detail as to what I'm doing and then the video is going to cut to me explaining it in a second So I'm going to briefly run through what I've done. I'm trying to save time and not double handle. So when I trim this fitting, it means that this pipe here, I need to come up with the length of that because it's only got the overall from the center to the face of the plan. And up here, you can see it's missing the, the measurement. So what I've done, I marked here the center of the, of the pipe basically. And half the diameter of a five inch pipe is 70 mil. So this line here, 70, that line there, 70. So overall should match up perfect to the diameter of that pipe. So the reason why I've done two of them is so I can um, flip the pipe because as you can see, half of this way, half of that way. So yeah, I got it centered up. I, I use my square at the back not only to um, not only to square it off to keep it running true and get the obviously put it in the center I've got my sliver of pipe underneath 20 mil pre-cut so the set here is 20 mil over here I've got you know a whole bunch of different sizes for anything that I'm doing so they're already pre-cut right there now what I do, as soon as I can see it touching the floor, as soon as I can see it touching the floor is where I mark. So as you could imagine, a piece of pipe sitting on the, on the table and running true, as soon as it butts up to it is where you want the cut to be. Now this line's pretty crude because it's MIG welding and, I, and you can see this, I can fill gaps in properly, like big gaps, 12 mil if I need to. From the center of the pipe to the face, of the pipe it needs to be 685 mil so from here to there is 685 mil I've done two marks just to double check so from the center to what should be the face of the new cut is marked down here and I've you know you see me use the calculator so how much does it be 680 685 minus what this here was which was 207 mil 207 minus my three mil gap for there minus 15 mil for the flange equals to 460 mil so what I done I measured from here up to here and that's the mark for 460 mil so that that lets me know that from this point here to there there's a gap for me to put the flange so I can now take this to the saw take this measurement to the saw and get it cut down and it will save me a whole bunch of time because the alternative of that would be um, cutting it putting it back in this position measuring across here with a straight edge to this point here the cut isn't going to be good so that measurement could be thrown off and then whatever this here is I can't really trust and then I would have to obviously cut the piece after 
which is a whole bunch of double handling. At least this way here, when I cut this with an angle grinder, I can get them to cut it on the saw. I hope that was clear and precise and you understand exactly where I'm coming from. And um, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I show you, to a lot of people it could be common sense and to other people it's a new method of pipe fabrication. It's a, a new life hack. It's, oh no, I've been doing it wrong forever. Now I know the right way to do it. So yeah i like i like sharing these things i i should make more videos like this because what what i do learn a lot of people they they don't have the basic understanding of things because basic to different people means lots of different things for me something that i see as basic and i've been doing forever could be like the craziest life hack for someone else and vice versa there's 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 things i never quite went to to college i did go to college and learn pipe fitting and welding and stuff but there's still a lot of fundamentals that i don't know just because i went straight into into the workforce working on price work so all i know is speed and efficiency so these four pipes that's only a couple hours work for me you know i'd, I'd get them push push comes to shove if i was peak effort and performance you know no, not hung over or any nonsense like that i could probably make eight of these in a day and that's like it is rushing but it's nothing crazy do you if you get what i'm saying so yeah that uh, i try to prioritize speed which is why something like this you would suggest welding the elbow first you know weld it on and then you can, you know, roll these two 45 kind of butts next to each other. But no, that's that's extra double handling. That's tacking it together, putting it into your putting it into your captain's wheel or whatever method you have to weld it, weld it up and then take it out to put it back. It's double handling. I would rather do the effort that you're gonna see me do a little bit later on, where I tack my um, rotating handle on the on the at back side of it and I'd rather counterweight it and do that weird a weird weld where you know there's so much weight on it but it saves me time and it allows me to fabricate everything all in one go like now and um, yeah it may not be the e easiest way but it's definitely the fastest way and like I keep saying my priorities are speed I get paid per weld so this flange has a has a certain price and each butt weld has a certain price and it changes per size of the pipe so all about speed you know that is what it is all about speed i'm just gossiping and chatting through this video not explaining what i'm doing i, I do this all the time but it's it's so difficult to explain everything that i'm doing because i'd have to be so robotic like now angling the flange backwards so when i tack at the top it opens up a gap sits the flange in the middle double check the face of the flange i tack the inside because it doesn't move so much if you want the flange to move more you tack the outside rotating it 90 degrees gonna be using you know the levels making everything as level as possible for the second orientation being leveled all i'm caring about is the red pipe to make sure that's level the horizontal of the flange at the top doesn't really matter too much as long as it's in the ballpark now i'm tacking the bottom because obviously all welds shrink and you want to make sure that you tack the right orientation to to like predict where it's going to be shrinking so the bottom's going to make it shrink more to pull it level and then i'm going to catch it with the you know the second tack on top same here i'm moving really fast tacking these two flanges just because you know it would have it would have pulled out of the way if you try to put everything level and tack it you're going to notice that you're always going to have piss flanges because the first tack has always shrunken before the second tack goes on solidifies and shrinks to counter react you know the shrinkage of the first tack here's my angle piece yes you shouldn't tack onto the fittings it's an industry standard in this country it happens so yeah i'm gonna do it sorry boys here two welds next to each other bang in one go and that's nice that easy. ready to weld up the one is here and the other three are right here So thank you very much for watching, 
and I will see you lot in the next video.